Hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. In today's episode, we are going to be headed down to Rockwell Mall because they have the new 2022 Range Rover on display. Now, last week I was supposed to go to the Range Rover display launch in white space, but because I got hit with COVID, I couldn't attend the event. So today, they're going to have two cars on display there at the Rockwell Center so that we're going to be able to check the cars out. But for now, we're going to go head to breakfast and then talk about the Range Rover and why it's been such a big part of our lives. Not only was it a big part of my growing up years because my father had the Range Rover Classic, he had the P38 model, and then when I could afford my own Range Rover, I got into the L322, and then we had the previous generation, which was the L405, which I thought when we sold it because we were moving to the farm, I wasn't gonna look for it anymore, but lo and behold, we're going full circle, and then we're gonna check out the new 2022 L460 Range Rover, if I'm not mistaken. The numbers that I just threw out were actually the codes for the chassis. So in case you guys aren't Range Rover fans, those are definitely the, um, I guess, the arrangements. Every Almost every 10 years, they release a new Range Rover and you had the Range Rover Classics, which are collectible, the notoriously uh, unreliable P38s, and then the L322, which I had a really interesting funny and bad experience. I'll be trying to post some of my Range Rover photos here. Even uh, as a child, when we would do adventures in our Range Rover, the family, so I'll try to post that here so you guys can see how much it has been an impact and part of my life growing up. But today is all about the 2022 Range Rover, talking about the advancements in details and showing you guys what this car is all about. So let's go walk to breakfast first and then we're gonna go to the mall Hopefully there will be no people yet when we check the car out so that we have time to film everything. Our previous Range Rover was so good that I actually had to assign it to Joey as her daily driver car. Even though if I loved the car so much, it was actually assigned to her as her city car back then. But we had some great, great moments with it. But the, the problem with owning Range Rovers is they're not in the highest reliability index range. But a lot of people know this and still doesn't seem to bother them and still would, wouldn't mind owning a Range Rover. I think it's part of the Range Rover experience to have some reliability issues now. I'm hoping that this new Range Rover is a little better than the previous ones. Okay, walking to the display. The mall is still semi-closed. Nice thing is it's cordoned off so they can regulate the amount of people coming in. Welcome to Rockwell Mall. We're here now in the center looking at two fabulous variants for the new Range Rover. Now over here we have the short wheelbase diesel behind you and behind me is the long wheelbase V8 twin turbo version. Let's go check out some key features of this car. I've been doing a lot of research and I can't believe how many patents that they've filed to make this new Range Rover. According to the internet, they filed over 150 patents for this car. Plus, it's got 70 different computer modules running everything. Let's start off with the front of the car because I think it's a good departure from the old design, but it actually keeps a lot of the retro design from the previous L405 model. As you can see, it almost looks very similar in terms of design, but what I like about the new Range Rover is they really cleaned up all the lines and tolerances. You can't really notice it without seeing and touching it, but basically the gapping of the car looks so good. They also tried to smoothen out a lot of the design features of the car, making it very classic in that sense where it's gonna age well over time. Now, a lot of people have talked about all the sensors down here. They've basically put the camera, parking sensors, tried to hide it behind this grill face over here. Now this, I think, is the autobiography edition where it has the center console division. So if you're more of a drive me around driver type of person, this is definitely gonna be for you. This has the seven seat option also, which is the first time that's been introduced to the Land Rover family. According to the internet also, Car Wow, Matt Watson, the headlights have a special blocking feature allowing it to block almost 16 different elements at any given time to make sure oncoming traffic is not dazzled by your super expensive headlights. How cool is that? 
So in the side profile of the Range Rover, it actually looks very clean and very classy. First off, if you guys haven't noticed that this weather strip here is actually gone. It's been built into the door frame. It gives it the Range Rover a very clean look and you don't see that rubber exposed what you normally get on a normal SUV. Also over here, the old Range Rover used to have a very thick filler and now it's just a glass-to-glass -glass combination with this very small strip here dividing the two. Now, they carried over the door handles from the Velar where when you approach the car, the door handle pops out and then after that, when you're driving off, the door handle will sink back in. Now let's go to the most favorite part that I think they did so well in the design, which is the rear. Over here in the rear, I think is the most beautiful update that they can ever do to the Range Rover. Starting off with this very hidden taillights. Now when the car is turned off, all you see is black. And because they have some design pattern for this, they basically projected the lights forward so that it can reflect backward so it's diffused. And that's why it's got this like little hue where it's a soft touch the brake light diffusion. Now the signal lights are hidden over here. If you press the key, you'll see that um, light up over here. And in true fashion, the classic split tailgate, which is notorious for all Range Rovers. So you have the split tailgate where you can sit down and then you can bring out it's called a viewing deck, I think, where if you're looking or watching a horse race or you want to have a picnic, they also have speakers built in here so you can hear your sound system. I don't see the speakers in this one. Maybe in the upper variants they have it. But you can basically lean. There. How cool is that? Now, obviously, if you're camping and stuff, there's a lot of luggage space. You can also drop the seats electronically from over here and then basically flatten the whole inside. Now, as I said, this is the first time they offer the seven-seat variant for the new Range Rover, which means for those people with big families, definitely this might be a contender versus the regular, I guess, Expedition or Suburban that you can get on the market. Over here, you have a lot of control features that are able to fold the middle seats and raise them up. Now, if you do have the seven-seater variant option, you can also raise them up from over here, which means these things will come up that way. Anyway, let's go to the inside, which is where I want to be, really. Classy, I love it. Now, the Autobiography Range Rover Edition is mostly the top-of-the-line feature for these cars. When you're ordering the new Range Rover, the price range is going to be roughly anywhere from 17 million all the way up to 22 million. One of the biggest problems that they're facing right now is the chip shortage. As I mentioned, there are 70 computer modules, which means they need a lot of semiconductor chips to put into the builds of this car. Just the smell alone is so intoxicating. Now, this is the leather variant, obviously, but they do offer the new vegan option, which means you can get all this in vegan, but the only problem that I had with the vegan option is it was like a dark gray or a, like a darker blue-gray only tint. There wasn't any other options for that. Sitting inside the new Range Rover makes you really appreciate what they've departed from with the older model. I had the L405 model and I love that thing to bits, but the new Range Rover carries over this digital display design over here along with this curved touch LCD screen over here. I think this is the biggest in the industry. Now, the Defender also has something very similar to this. Now, let's turn the car on without starting it so that you can see the display. A lot of information is given. You have your navigation. You have these touch pads also where there's a little haptic feedback or they move down and up when you touch them. Now, you can definitely control the monitor over here through touch also and the nice thing with the new screen is it's not laggy so it gives you a lot of information on the car there is a built-in air filter system also in this car and one of the key highlights I think that the new design is touting is that the car is more aerodynamic and it's also quieter not only is it quieter they've actually built in some sound isolation or noise cancelling system into the headrest which means when you're in the car it's in the level of let's say Rolls-Royce or Bentley in terms of noise 
quietness. At the end of the day, it's mostly tire noise that you actually will hear from the outside, but the Range Rovers are very good at keeping the noise down outside. The new Range Rover also features new paddles behind the steering wheel. They're made of nice and aluminum material. And then they have this two-spoke design where it looks like it's more for a land yacht rather than an SUV. They also have this wood veneer here that is exposed and un unvarnished in that sense where it makes it look like a very expensive marine tool rather than something that rolls on the ground. Now the aircon system is over here. They decided to use analog systems but it's actually still digital in terms of their display. Just remove my mask real quick because we are inside the car. One of the key things that they've updated with this car also is the gear selector switch. Back in the day when they shared the platform with Jaguar, the gear selector switch would be that round dial that when you start the car, it would pop up and you can just select which mode you want. And then now it's now a grab handle system. It feels kind of weird initially, but I'm sure when we start to drive it, we're gonna be happy with it. Now, the great part about this uh, introduction to the new Range Rover is that later on the week, when they finish with the display here, we're going to be able to borrow one of these models so that we can do a proper road test. Let's move to the back seat because that's where the magic happens for the people who like to be driven around. Honestly, I love driving the older Range Rover and I'm sure the newer Range Rover with all the technology that comes with it is going to be a blast to drive. I just found out also from Ryan my allocation for the Range Rover hasn't even been confirmed, which means we don't know when it's going to be done. According to him, it could be produced somewhere in the third or fourth quarter this year, but till today, we don't have an actual confirmation. So I'm sure the line for getting one of these SUVs is very, very tall. When you feel like you don't want to be seen, you can just race up and down the privacy curtain. Obviously, you can tint the windows also, but the privacy curtain gives you that flexibility. Now, they were showing me the infotainment system in the back. If you were able to connect your iPhone to an HDMI cable, you can actually stream your videos of YouTube and Netflix onto your monitor. Each monitor can get its own feed, so you don't have to share your video with your passenger beside you. How cool is that? Now, Range Rovers are known for the ultimate luxury and convenience. And I'm sure when they were thinking of doing the infotainment system, that they really took into account that each individual has their own different taste and variety. Now, this isn't the four-seater version where you have the permanent center console here, along with the table that is dispatched. I'm sure we will see that variant later on. Now, this version is obviously still the longer wheelbase, so you have the extra legroom. I sat in front and I'm 5'11", and look at how much legroom I still have now. I mean, even the seats and how they are designed, it's comparable with any business class seat that you can ever buy or sit in. I mean, dare I even say this, it might even be a first class seat in that option because of all the legroom. Over here in the driver's side, you can actually bring down this footrest which actually allows you to stretch out the whole compartment and make the front seat move forward so that you can really almost lay down. I mean in the industry I think this will be the most laid back position that you can get in the rear seat. It almost feels like you're too laid back in that sense where you want to be a little more upright for the drive. Obviously multi-adjusting seats you can adjust the lower portion also. We're able to close the sunshade from here also so you don't need to bother the driver. If the sun's too hot, you can just close the sunshade on your own without asking for help. So in case the analog buttons don't do it for you, you have a digital cluster over here also. So slide to open. What is this? Really digitally controlled cup holders. Look at that! So this doesn't have the table feature that I was saying. It does have the extension here that you can put cup holders. We can control the seats also. The seats do have a massage function. So we can even control the front seat to go away. For that extra leg room. Attracting your vlog. 
you can actually have the seats heated in case you want that extra relaxedness that you get from a Range Rover. Wow, this is so good. It's not like getting an actual massage chair, but it does the job for long drives just to soothe you into the seat. And we can reset everything to get back to normal. So I'm learning all the controls, so reset this to reset everything. Everything moves on its own, it's so crazy. Okay, I think we've learned enough of the features of the long wheelbase. Let's check out the short wheelbase because I'm a bit happy with this legroom, but I didn't order this variant, so I'm actually quite curious to see how our legroom is in the other variant. Press the button. Ultimate convenience and laziness. I love it. Okay, let's check out the other variant. Come on. There you go. Soft touch doors. Now the wheel options on the new Range Rover extends from anywhere from 20 inch all the way up to 23 inch wheels. The car does have rear wheel steering now, which means it can angle about 7 degrees to help the car maneuver through tight spaces. The roll bar system is now electronically controlled up to 48 volts that they can deliver almost 1,600 pounds of force onto one side to make sure the car is flat. The car does have different dynamic modes, which we'll be able to test when we land or when we get to borrow the car. Let's check out the short wheelbase version to see what the differences are. Okay, first off, we're gonna sit in front to make sure that this is our driving position. Uh, I am 5'11 and I feel that this is my comfortable position. We're going to move to the back to see if I still fit with enough legroom to be comfortable enough. Because this short wheelbase isn't the autobiography edition, it doesn't have the digital console cluster here. Instead, you can just manually pull it down and then have a spring-loaded cup holder system. As you can see, even if I sat in front and I am the driver for the car at 5'11", it's not a big issue, even though this is the short wheelbase. I still have maybe two inches of legroom. Now, we're not as reclined as the long wheelbase because obviously with the extended um, wheelbase, you can basically almost lay down. But this still is a very comfy position to be in. You have almost the same control features where you can control this. But as you can see, this has no screen option here also. I did think I opted to not get the screen variant back here because most of the time I am in the front seat of the car. And that concludes this video. Now, I can't wait for them to lend us the car so that we can actually test it on the road. But for now, let me leave you with some B-roll montage of how beautiful these cars are. Hey guys, so this is day three of me test driving the 350D Range Rover and I absolutely love this thing. I'm going to give you a list of favorite things that I like about this car and a few things I don't like about this car. But first, we're gonna go on our last road trip to the Masungi Reserve and I'm gonna talk about the things in the interior of the car and then when we get to the venue, maybe the things I don't like about the car. It's not a lot, but it's a lot of stuff that you can live with and look over because the car is so good. It is really so good. Okay. 
We are finally on the way to Masungi Geo Reserve and we are actually in the outdoor space already which means I can actually talk about the SUV. Now after doing almost 500 kilometers in this D350 variant, I actually think that this version is going to be the best seller for Range Rover. The power is ample enough and I have no complaints when I'm overtaking or I've never felt like I lacked the power and I needed more horsepower. Now the diesel does have lots of torque on the lower RPM and it only revs to 4,000 RPM. Now the 8-speed automatic gearbox is super smooth but sometimes in traffic you feel like it lunges just a very very tiny bit. Nothing to complain about but I just noticed that difference. Now let's talk about the favorite things that I like about the 350D Range Rover. Definitely driving the Range Rover has been such a pleasure. Over the past three days I just kept wanting to keep driving and go to different places. Every time I arrive at the destination, I feel refreshed, I don't feel tired. The cabin is super quiet, you can't believe how quiet everything is inside. Even if we have a bike passing us on the outside, you can barely hear him inside the cabin. You're well insulated from the outside world. Also, the steering of the car is very light. You can use almost the tips of your fingers to manage the steering wheel, which means it does give you some detachment from feeling all the road vibrations, which is what you want in a luxury SUV. Now, the ride comfort of the air suspension is very, very good. During the long drives, we arrive at our destination at a very relaxed and comfortable manner. Another thing that I truly love about the 2022 Range Rover is just looking at it. From the front, you can see the retro design carried over from the previous gen Range Rover. But from the back, you can see the brand new design which looks really good. I love the silhouette diffused taillights. I think it's such a key highlight for the new Range Rover. And just these sleeker, cleaner body lines that they've managed to infuse in the design really carries over and I think this is going to be a classic masterpiece later on. Now the interior is such a great place to be in. The driver's seat is where I've been in for the last 500 kilometers and I have zero complaints. When you're parking the car and pushing the loading mode, the driver's seat does lower down itself along with the air suspension which makes departing and loading into the car very easy. Now over the past few days also we've loaded quite a few number of things in the boot and trust me there's more than enough ample space for you and your family. So the 2022 Range Rover also as I was saying is very quiet inside. Because it's very quiet inside when you listen to the sound system you actually feel like you're isolated in a listening room. The sound system is very good, it's very crisp and clear. It connects to my Apple CarPlay and it connects to my iPhone easily. Although sometimes it does drop out once in a while and you just have to repress the center mode and it's going to reconnect again. Now in tight spaces, the new Range Rover actually feels like a smaller SUV. You can really feel the advantage of their rear wheel steering, especially when I was doing U-turns and parking into parking slots. The SUV does feel more nimble than it really is for its size. Okay, last on my list is the Range Rover's new aerodynamic design. Now when you're coasting with the SUV and you come off the gas, you can really feel that the SUV is slipping through the air and just basically cutting through the air and being very efficient with the way it does it. Now the MPG of the SUV says it's about 14 liters to 100 kilometers. Now let's talk about some of the things that I don't like about the SUV. Now for me the shifter is a little clunky and a bit weird. It does feel like um, the big knob grip that you have versus the actuation that it gives doesn't really balance off. Now the aircon controls also are a little different. You have to pull to get the fan to control and then you have to push to get the modes to control and then you have to turn left and right to get the thermostat to control. So I wish they actually just made it a little less complicated in that sense. Now if you are filling at a petrol station, you have to know that the petrol secondary fuel door requires the bigger diesel spout, which is I think a Euro 5 compliant system. We just got to the destination. I'm going to talk about the last three things that I don't like about the 2022 Range Rover. So when I'm using Apple CarPlay, the haptic feedback disappears from the control system. And I don't know why that is. I'm hoping with a software update, they're able to bring that back. 
Also, because the cabin is super quiet, you basically jump out of your seat when the parking sensor gets triggered and you can't adjust the volume. You can mute it once in a while, but it is going to come back again. And lastly, I was informed that the proximity approach for the key fob was disabled because the car was draining battery. I'm hoping they can sort that out also later on because that would be a useful feature. So as I was saying, the wireless charger is down here. If you wanted to adjust the AC, you gotta pull this knob and then you get that. So we're gonna pump it up now because it's hot. And then push it down if you wanna get the, the vent on the seat. That's heat, I want some cooling on my seat. And then thermostat, twist. So there's a three-way action with this switch. Obviously we're gonna close the outside air. That has haptic feedback also. And then again, on Apple CarPlay, no haptic feedback, but when you get here, you have that sound. Okay, we are finally back in the city and wow, Masungi Jiro Reserve is a definitely must experience. There's two trails, the Legacy and then the Orientation Trail which we did. Now let's go back to the Range Rover. What can I say as my closing remarks for this 2022 Range Rover diesel short wheelbase? I think this will be the most ordered variant, this will be the best seller for Range Rover. It is more than adequate as an SUV, it is such a pleasure to drive and I guess my my final thoughts are, I don't want to give it back. Honestly, don't want to give it back. If I had my allocation, I'd be really excited to know when I'm going to get mine. But this, this was such a great experience. Thank you so much to Land Rover Philippines. You can follow them on Instagram. And yes, you can visit the BGC showroom to check out the other variants. But this, this was such a great experience. And if you are in the market, for these things, if you're still considering whether to buy it or not, let me just say, do it, because you won't regret it. It's so good. And on that bombshell, I'll see you guys again in the next video.